Welcome to the Reaction Wheel Control Law presentation. Subtitle, Olive in Your Space, version 2. This was a project performed for Aero 465, Aerospace Senior Systems Lab. Principal investigators, Nicholas Borgerson, Jacob Buchanan, and Kevin Jones. The objective of this investigation is to design a control law that is capable of commanding a re reaction wheel motor system to reorient back to a designated angular position after an angular displacement. The steps taken to accomplish this goal are listed below. First, we need to communicate with the gyro to receive angular velocity readings. Then, we need to communicate with the motor control chip, which will enable us to command the reaction wheel. Finally, a control law will be adapted to send proportional commands to the motor based on the angular displacement relayed by the gyroscope. For some quick background, let's discuss inertial measurement units, or IMUs. IMUs are a suite of sensors used to track position and orientation of whatever they are attached to, generally spacecraft. For our purposes, an IMU consists of an accelerometer and a gyroscope. The accelerometer measures changes in linear velocity, while the gyroscope measures change in angular velocity. This data is all that is needed to begin constructing a system that can control the attitude of a spacecraft in orbit. Using these measurements, we can begin constructing a control law that will actually change the physical orientation of our system. To impart a momentum change, a reaction wheel can be used. Reaction wheels are simple systems that use a flywheel and a motor to adjust angular momentum in a system. By rotating the flywheel clockwise or counterclockwise, a net momentum change is deposited into the entire system, altering angular position. These types of systems are commonly used aboard spacecraft to maintain a specific attitude or adjust to different attitudes. The block diagram shown here illustrates implementation of the control law developed. The ITG 3200 series gyro chip, which is a component of the IMU board, feeds in angular velocity data to the Arduino Uno microcontroller. Accelerometer readings from the IMU were not utilized because gyro data was sufficient for providing intended system control. The Arduino feeds commands to the Toshiba motor driver based on the gyro data for effective motor control. This operation continues in a closed loop fashion until sufficient system stabilization has been reached. The schematic for the circuit used is displayed here. The gyro is connected to analog pins on the Arduino for proper data transmission. The Arduino supplies 3.3 volts to the gyro. The Arduino also feeds in analog inputs to the motor driver, which are dictated based on motor control functions explained later. The motor control chip communicates this information to the DC motor, which then spins accordingly. The Arduino supplies 5 volts to the control chip, and an external battery provides 9 volts to the actual motor. The table shown here illustrates the motor control power functions. For the purpose of this project, only modes counterclockwise, clockwise, and stop, along with analog pins 1, 2, PWM, and standby were utilized. This was accomplished by feeding in either high and or low power to the motor control inputs based on the desired function, where PWM and standby inputs remained in high power mode. As shown below, high and low, low and high, and low and low power combinations supplied to analog inputs 1 and 2 respectively caused the motor to rotate counterclockwise, clockwise, and finally stop. The Arduino uses angular velocity readings to then alter the motion of the motor through implementation of algorithms detailed further. In order to collect meaningful data from the gyro and then use that to control the motor, multiple algorithms had to be created. The first of these was a calibration algorithm. This algorithm set the initial gyro values to zero. To do this, we took in 100 values from the gyro and averaged them to find the initial resting point for, th for the gyro. The gyro reading was then subtracted from this and this was decided as the zero point for the gyro. The next algorithm created was a drift filter. This filters out the small readings that build up over time and create an ever-growing angle value. To do this, after multiple counts of the angular velocity being below a certain threshold, we set the angular velocity to zero as well as the change in the angle. 
This kept the angle from building up. Our next algorithm was an algorithm to scale the angle within negative 360 to 360 degrees. This algorithm was created by removing or adding multiples of 360 until the gyro reading was within the specified range. Lastly, we created a mo motor control algorithm. This algorithm simply forces the motor to spin clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the angle at which it is currently rotating. Seen here is the motor functioning as specified. When the gyro is rotated one way, the motor spins one way. When the gyro is rotated back the other way, it spins the other way. If the gyro and the motor were assembled into one unit, we would eventually see the unit reach equilibrium. However, due to limitations of the housing for the motor, this is not possible. Due to this, overall the project was a marginal success. We did create a control law to control the motor, however, it was not assembled properly and therefore we could not see it in action. In order to reach a better conclusion of this experiment, multiple constraints and limitations could be overcome. One of these would be receiving more time to further develop the experiment, which would allow for more experimentation towards a system that could actually function properly and, and reach equilibrium. Furthermore, with extra time, the control law could become more robust, allowing for braking and pulsing of the speed. Hardware was also a constraint for us where the housing was already built with the reaction well already having a housing unit. If we were to assemble another housing unit for it, it would probably not contain the large metal disc at the bottom, as well as allowing for more room to store the Arduino and the breadboard. Future work for this project would include creating a multiple axis control that would include gimbaled reaction wheels as well as multiple reaction wheels to control all three axes of the system. Further development of the algorithm would also <coughs> create a more precise reaction wheel that would allow it to break or pulse the velocity as well as give us higher motor precision. <laughs>